state institutions in the country are taking steps to uh, aim at protecting Ghanaians from contracting the deadly coronavirus. So far, 126,380 cases have been recorded across the globe, with about 4,635 people dying. In West Africa, Nigeria, Ghana's uh, direct neighbor Burkina Faso and recently Ivory Coast have all recorded cases. Well, President Okufuadu has been talking about plans, what his government is doing to ensure that this disease doesn't come to Ghana and when it, if it does, it doesn't spread across. And part of those include an allocation of $100 million to enhance preventive measures. I'll have in the studio head of our health desk, Fred Smith, who has been at a coronavirus meeting on what measures are being put in place to help us stay away from it. Before that, here is President Kufado on the measures his government is putting in place. At my prompting, the Minister for Finance has made available the CD equivalent of 100 million United States dollars to enhance our coronavirus preparedness and response plan. That is to fund the expansion of infrastructure, purchase of materials and equipment, and public education. I have ordered the suspension of all international travels by public officials, except for critical assignments, which will have to be authorized by the chief of staff at the office of the president. All public officials are to remain within the jurisdiction until further notice. Video conferencing facilities and other technological tools are to be utilized whenever possible for international engagements. I've also instructed further enhancements of the protocols for inbound traffic from already affected countries. Fellow Ghanaians, all of us should as much as possible desist from all foreign travels except the most critical ones until there's a grip on the virus. That's President Kufado announcing efforts by his government to contain or make sure that the disease doesn't get here in the first place. And if it does, that we are ready to deal with it. I have here in the studio uh, Fred Smith, who is editor uh, uh, and also head of our health desk. He's been to a program by the Ghana Health Service on what has been done. Fred, <coughs> you're welcome to the studio. Thank you, Gifty. And now this program was, was meant for faith-based organizations. Tell us. And NGOs. And NGOs. So tell us exactly what was it about and how does it even help us in this case? Well, you realize that the virus spreads in areas where people, uh, where there's congestion, lots of people gather mm. and that kind of thing. So they, they're targeting uh, organizations that group a lot of people. So for instance, the church, the mosque, and places like mm. that. Mm. And these are the people who came. and. Uh, the media fell under the NGO, and so I was also invited to attend to also get to know. And it's been an eye-opener for me, Gifty. A simple thing like how to wash my hand, mm. I realized at this place I didn't know how to do it. Okay. Uh, what I've been doing all along was wrong. So show us what you have been doing and what, according to the Ghana Health Service, ought to be done. Well, I, I just put my hand under water and mm. just do this. And okay. once I'm satisfied, I just leave it. But it's not so. Okay. It, takes, it should take some time. You need to pay attention to what you're doing. Demonstrate to us. So pour the, if it's a liquid soap, mm -hmm. in there and like this. Mm -hmm. so because if it's like this, it can drop. So, so it looks to me like there are stages of hand washing. Uh, exactly. So the there first are stage is that you have the water, uh, the, the, the soap. soap in your in your palm first of all mm. you don't have to press the soap with your fingers press from here why, why not press with your fingers you're be, going to wash be, them anyway be, because another person will come and use it and if you are carrying any you virus okay. you would have deposited them right. on on this right. so use here mm -hmm. it is for your own good because after washing your hands you may have you may want to touch or do and do something else okay. so it's for your own protection use okay. here to push it down and then you get it and then you rub this way okay. when you're done you can rub this way as well and then when you are satisfied mm -hmm. now everywhere okay. this way this and, way and then, then when you are done now you have to wash this way to okay. be sure you are properly cleaning okay. and then you can do this you can do this 
you can you have to do this mm. so that you can clear all the middle portion all the holes in between so that you are sure that everything is gone okay. when you are done you don't have to sprinkle you don't have to do this mm. you just have to allow the water to dry off okay coolly why and can't you sprinkle uh, if you do that and there are any viruses still left on you, sprinkling it on the well, area. Will there Someone be any viruses left after washing our hands? Y yeah, you, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, don't, you don't have to sprinkle. Mm. Uh, it is just for precaution. So okay. try and ensure that everything you do is in the bowl, in okay. the sink. Okay. Now, the tissue, you must actually pull it top to bottom this mm. way so that you don't contaminate what is left. Someone else will also come and use it. So I see. Uh, that's another way. Once okay. you have that, uh, you do that gently. You dry it up gently. And then you use that so you may have opened the tap. Uh, as you open the, the tap, mm. you want to close it back. So you use the tissue you've used to dry up mm -hmm. the water to shut it so that you're not touching it again. OK. Because so. Okay you are 100% sure that you are not carrying any germs. You've clearly washed your hands and right. you are moving on. So this meeting was supposed to educate faith-based organizations and NGOs on these so that what, they go back and educate the people? So when they go back to the churches, the mm -hmm. mosques, mm -hmm. they, they know how to handle things to ensure that uh, it, there's no spread. If anybody comes in there and with the virus, it doesn't spread amongst them. Okay. In fact, even at the church, you realize that the church starts with worship. So someone else, someone will, uh, was, will lead the worship with mm -hmm. a microphone, sing for about an hour, two, sometimes three hours. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure there will be lots of uh, saliva deposited on the sponge, on the microphone. microphone sponge. And so uh, the advice is that they should, they should have someone designated for handling that, that aspect of it. Carefully remove that foam once that is done. If you have only one microphone in the church, mm -hmm. remove that foam before the next person, if it's the pastor, whoever, also takes the mic. So you put a new foam there. The foams are not expensive at all. Mm. You put a new one there. So churches are essentially before. being advised to buy more of that cover for the microphone so that one person or more than two people don't use one. The same, the same sponge. Okay. So once you're done after service, you'd have to dispose all of them dispose so the next service you'd have to come with new sets D can't you just wash them no uh <laughs> the, it's not safe to just to to be washing That's what the Ghana Health Service is saying. yes it's not it's not wow. safe so once you're done just put them in the bin and we'll be fine also well for those of us who sing in church <laughs> um i don't know if everybody I mean in church will come along with this arrangement um, but it will certainly be a bit awkward when you are in church and you're insisting that this has to be changed and it's not being changed uh, no it's, it's, it will be very easy because those who handle the microphone are just a few unless in cases where you do a dance day this person will come and say oh this happened to me I had a dream and this person did that you to mean me. testimonies yes <laughs> Okay. Right. Well, but this is a very serious matter. I mean, you've seen how at this time, how fast this disease is spreading. And you've seen how even, I mean, people at the top, usually when there's an outbreak like this, people at the top, you know, happens to those of us on the ground. But to, now we're seeing the level of uh, um, um, spread. We're seeing how people at the top are being infected. Fred, what, remind us of the things that we need to know. Basic First things thing, that we need to know about wash your virus. hands. Uh, well, uh, for prevention, mm -hmm. wash your hands under running water and you do that with soap. That's the first thing you have to do. Uh, keep some distance from persons showing signs and currently the fear is there, so uh, keep your distance whether the person is showing signs or not. We know that uh, it takes about two weeks for the signs to show. Mm -hmm. So whether you know it or not, it is just safe for you to keep a distance when you are speaking to mm -hmm. someone, mm -hmm. just like we've done now, yeah. uh, don't get too close. No hugs, no handshakes, mm. you know, uh, people who like to kiss and all of yeah. those things. I think uh, this you, is really mm, trending at this point. It, it is uh, trending, uh, but is trending. even that, hey, I won't you? advise. Oh, all right, okay. <laughs> why? Why? why I won't, it's, it's still you? contact. It's still body contact. And okay. so if you have it, and that brings you very close. 
So okay. I want. So what way, what way? This does the fist work? No. So you can just say hi. Uh, oh, then I right. move on. You know. Well, <laughs> well, well. Fred Smith has just returned from a Ghana Health Service uh, meeting with NGOs and faith-based organisations, and this is the information he's bringing. Fred will stay with me a while longer because I'm going to go on Facebook. We'll put some messages there. I want to find out from you what your own thoughts are. So what do you want to know about coronavirus we put there? We say send your questions and thoughts here. It will be addressed on the post at 3 p.m. Now, what we intended to do was to have a representative of the Ghana Health Service. Um, at this point, Fred, uh, we don't have the representative here in the studio. Not, not at the moment. Not at the moment. But so. because I've received the training, uh, well, I can answer some Well, of let's this. see how that goes. So <laughs> the question that Bambol is putting there is what are the causes of the spread of coronavirus in Italy, we know perfectly that they follow very every measures we've been told to practice. Okay, I'm not sure what you're saying, but you're essentially asking. You're saying that you believe Italy is doing the right thing, but yet it is, uh, and yet it is spreading there. What is? Why is it? Spreading? It is a belief. We don't know what cause. We don't know. So, what's causing uh, the fast spread of it? Uh, exactly, right. and we we all know how it spreads, contacts and so on and so forth. And per the Italian culture, someone will give you a peck. Mm. Friends do that uh, every now and then. It's normal. So maybe we cannot give a definite answer. Right. So Sally for one has says, I would like to know how the uh, how know the signs and how to how it transmit from person to another, and then also how one can prevent him or herself from getting their fashion. I think Fred has spoken about how to prevent it, but uh, the, signs. the signs. The signs, the person will have fever, so the temperature will go up. Uh, uh, the normal body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. Mm. The WHO has also set a target. Once you reach 38 degrees Celsius, mm. it means that you are, uh, you are in danger mm. and you must be assessed. It doesn't mean you have coronavirus, you must be assessed. Right. But in Ghana, it's 37.5. Uh, f far, s far more stringent than what the WHO is advising, and so okay. uh, we're doing we're doing very well there. Well, what this question says uh, is a very interesting question he's putting up. He says, "How can barbers and hairdressers in general prevent themselves from the coronavirus?" Uh, what some people are doing, uh, some uh, artisans are doing, is to put on gloves and give same to some of uh, their customers who come. Gloves? Yes, put on gloves. How does that have anything to do with hair? Uh, with the hair. I so mean, for those who are being barbered. Uh, well, they will, they will be sitting there and they may touch things. So the best thing for them is to have some gloves. Okay. Once you are done, you just carefully remove them. And another thing mm -hmm. is not just about having the gloves on. It's about how to take them off so that you don't contaminate yourself in the process. Tell us about it. So you, you do that carefully to ensure that it's not touching. So you, you roll it, okay, if it's on your hand this way, you just mm. roll it and okay. then you take it off. Okay, so you roll it off uh, smoothly uh, and then you take it off. So let's go back on Facebook, get some more of your questions. This one says, how do I keep safe, myself safe as an Uber driver? <laughs> any, any tips for him here, Fred? I think for people like that, if you want to set up an electronic payment system, because I think that is the only point where passengers and the, the riders and the come drivers in come into contact. Mm -hmm. And so if you, keep, you have some electronic payment system, you'd have done yourself some good. Okay. Well, this one says, uh, one Ghana, okay, so somebody says, I want to know, aside someone transmitting it to you, whether you can, uh, can you get it without any contact with an infected person? Not at all. But what we have seen, and what, which I must add though, is what is happening in the United States of America where uh, some cases were recorded of people who had no, who had no uh, travel, travel rec records, yeah. but they had it. I think that particular incident is still being investigated. To that, that, that was simply mean they would have been in contact with someone who... Uh, would have traveled before or has come into contact with someone who mm. has the virus. But then if you listen to the report, it did indicate that they had no known contact with anybody who has traveled. They have not traveled and they had no known contact with anybody who has traveled. So I think that they're still investigating. Yeah, that, that investigation um, will be incident. very and helpful. I think it's a curious uh, one to look yeah, up for. Sure. Let's get more of those messages. Um, one 
uh, okay. One, when one contacts the virus, does it give the person immune immunity? As the person has healed, okay. So whether you be immune from the infection after you have healed, that was, I think, the case with Ebola at a point. But yeah. I'm not very sure about this. So one. we need the health experts to tell us that. Okay. But we know that some people in China have been reinfected. Right. So. Yeah. Is it airborne or fluid? Uh, or, or contacting people th uh, through fluids. And I'm getting similar messages here as well on our WhatsApp platform. The question is, is it airborne? What, do they, what are the experts saying, Fred? Well, because you can contract it if you're close to the person, my understanding is that there are droplets as you speak and those ones cause it. Uh, it is still a technical question. The mm. experts must give must a definite in. answer. Right. Which is what we're hoping to do with the Ghana Health Service. But trust me, we'll get him to come back here. This is the pandemic, as you know. So we'll do a lot of education on that here on this show. So this one says, if no kiss, is it, does it also mean, mean absence from sex, even with your own spouse? I don't think so. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a question that gets spread to smile. Is, uh, Nobody is talking about uh, not having sex, right? Yeah, you have to take individual decisions on that. Well, that's <laughs> essentially, well, with your spouse, it's certainly your choice and certainly your decision and it's certainly a good thing to do, I think. Well, uh, barbers use one machine from one person to another. Can it be transferred through this medium? Do we know this at this point? All right. So again, we need to check if the sterilizers that they use in these barbering shops actually work. So we need to check. Some barbers don't have working sterilizers. Mm. So they just have the box. They just put it in whether it's working or not. That's it. So we need to check. But once it's sterilized, it provides some safety for the next user. Right. Some churches stay in church for so long. Mm. The, the, what, did they, what did they say about the length of time that people stay in church? Uh, there was no talk about the length of time. Yeah. But the advice is for you not to come into contact. Don't be touching people. And I mean, the microphone issue that we talked about, mm. don't use the same microphone and share the saliva just one person to it and try not to be touching people and if you have any fever or any uh, suspicion of coronavirus just self-isolate okay. until the uh, and then make a call in fact the very important point is that don't don't go to the hospital make a call because there are some contacts that have been sent out call those contacts mm, it goes to the uh, emergency center mm -hmm. and then someone will come for you in okay. fact a team will come to your house mm -hmm. wherever and take you to the nearest hospital where preparation would have been done to receive you so don't do that because if you are infected god forbid if you are infected and you make your way all the way to the hospital the chances are that you are infecting all the people you come into contact with on your contact way with, yeah. to the hospital and the hospital staff themselves. Now, we need to protect the hospital staff because they are the ones that are keeping us uh, protected in all of this. Fred, in fact, stay. in uh, in one instance, the in one of the countries that have been affected, I don't want to be specific, the health officials who were supposed to deal with this matter, the frontline workers, happened to be infected as well well they had come into contact with persons who later were later found to have been infected and yeah. so all a majority of the health professional had to be quarantined and so who is taking care of who you will take care of it's you. the reason why you must take personal responsibility now now that you don't have a case okay well Fred will stay with us a, a while longer I know some of you are still sending in your messages but in the United States of America President Donald Trump has announced a ban on travelers to the state from Europe during a televised address to the nation. Now, the ban, we understand, should be in place for the next 60, uh, 30 days in an attempt to slow the spread of the coronavirus. Just yesterday, the, uh, America had uh, recorded 32 deaths already. That This is a pandemic. Every country is taking all the necessary steps to make sure that their citizens do not contract it, that it doesn't come to their country. You've seen all the countries around, most of the countries around Ghana have it. We don't have it, thankfully. Well, President Kufado has tips for you as well on how we can stay safe from this. He's talking about handshakes, as Fred, as Fred uh, indicated. Listen. I was encouraged to note that the two well-attended funerals I participated in over the weekend in Ashanti, people were observing the injunction against shaking hands. I want to reiterate, as I indicated on 6th March, and as the Ministry of Health has advised, 
that we have to revisit our custom of shaking hands and stop doing so completely. And we must cover our mouths when we cough or sneeze. All of us need to adjust. Let us continue to observe the basic preventive behavior, i.e. washing our hands regularly, using alcohol-based sanitizers, stopping shaking hands, and avoiding unnecessary close body contact. Government is an analyzing the potential impact to our economy of the virus and will trigger the relevant response to minimize it. Avoid unnecessary body contact is what the president said. You saw what Fred did this afternoon when I tried to give him the elbow. He totally avoided it. He's just coming from a training, so you can expect that. Well, some of you are still sending in your messages. This one is asking, is it possible, for, uh, is it possible to apply any preventive measures when you are on board a Trotsky? Now, that's a very interesting question because you know what? Maxwell Agbagba has been out there talking to people in Trotro. Fred, what do you say to that question before well, we go to Maxwell? I, I think you'll be touching things. You'll be giving the mates some money. Mm. And so it, it's safer if you wear gloves here again. Mm. And make sure you'll be sitting very close to people, but make sure you are not touching them. And these days, I think the, uh, the Trotro will pick three on, on a line. Is that what they're doing? I think so, yeah. Okay, well, let's see for ourselves. <laughs> what, how does the trotro? I mean, I've not used trotro, but it used to be my, my favorite. Trotro is actually how I learned, I, I learned driving because yeah. I'll always sit, I'll always sit in front yeah. of a trotro and, and look at how the drivers are, you know, and that's how I, I learned in my head how to drive. <laughs> three in a but, row, that's what I'm hearing. But we're hearing <laughs> that trotros are now taking three in a row. Now, that's a major economic problem for uh, mates and their drivers. But Maxwell Agbaba, like I said, joined one of those trotros. Take a look. I'm currently in a vehicle um, from Seco Terminal. I'm heading to Russia, uh, in a place in Dansman called um, Russia. And now here in this structure, I um, mean, this commercial vehicle, popular known as structure, what I've observed is that um, there's nothing like personal space. There's no way you can avoid um, the next person, you know, sitting to you. President Ekufuado um, yesterday, um, in his address to the nation on COVID-19, um, advised us to, as much as possible, um, try and create, you know, some space. Uh, we should try and reduce, you know, personal, you know, contacts. In fact, doctors have actually advised that one of the ways to um, stay away or to be safe from the coronavirus is to avoid crowded places and contacts with um, people. But here in the Trotro, there's nothing like personal space, I tell you. Even here as I sit here, I try as much as possible to um, avoid a lunch, but I cannot avoid him. <laughs> there's still some space, and there's still some kind of closeness. Luckily, we have a nurse here who is in this structure. I want to find out from her what she makes of the situation. We are all at risk of being infected. So the advice I'll give to them is, when you enter into a trust key, you should be careful. Careful in a way that someone who is coughing, someone might be sneezing, you might not know if the person is infected or not. Because at that moment, it doesn't show. The signs and symptoms doesn't show at that moment. So when you come into contact with someone who is coughing, sneezing, I think when you have an handkerchief or something, direct, when you are direct to the person, the best way to go is when you have an anchor, you just pick it up. Someone coughing, someone sneezing, so that at least you cover your nose like this, so that when a person is coughing, it, it will not come into contact with you. And I think the best way to is most of them to, should carry hand sanitizers along when they are going to work or anything, so that once in a while they just drop some and then just rub it on your hands. Just sitting here, the mates just coughed right now, and I don't know whether to, I should run out of the car or not. <laughs> I mean, we don't have any outbreak of coronavirus, but let me find out from you. Do you think there's enough education? Um, people are well educated enough on this, when they need to cover their mouth when sneezing, when coughing, and all of that? I don't think most of the people know, so I think they should be educated more on. I don't know. I'm going to 
Well, what he's saying is that we need to take prayers, our prayers seriously. We need to pray against the outbreak of coronavirus here in Ghana because we do not know how this infection you know, come about. Mm, some people, they are just stubborn. <laughs> they don't follow the rules because when you tell them to wash their hands or use sanitizer, they think, oh, after all, Ghana gems is African gems are friendly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. some people they just do what, but it's we, we just thank God that we are all safe mm -hmm. because yeah. some of the things that we do, if should in case that virus should strike right now, I think it will be very, very bad. Well, I just want to find out from you in case there's an outbreak, are you still going to rely on public transport? Considering how it spreads, yeah. it won't be advisable to be joining public transport because. If you look at um, most of the countries that recorded the highest um, numbers, their, their streets are cleared and other things. So it's actually going to be uh, a disturbance because in Ghana, this our main means of getting to where we want to get to. Mm. And if this um, deadly disease is such that it can be contacted easily, mm. then I'm not sure we'll be able to join the public transport. So what, what other transport will you be doing? Should there be an outbreak? Um, you know, when it comes like that, you, you just have to stay off from the streets. So um, in instances where like, there's an outbreak here, because currently there are about um, 88 cases in Africa, with Egypt recording the highest. And if such incident is to drop here in Ghana, trust me, the impact will be, will be, will be very detrimental. So we just have to, like Baba said, we just have to pray that um, it doesn't come here. And if it does, we just have to um, take the uh, precautions that have been given and stay more careful. Okay. Thank you. Okay. My name is Prince Fosu. Prince Fosu. Yes, please. Thank you. You're Thank most you. welcome. You better in give us information about the symptoms of it so that if someone is affected, we can easily identify it or uh, see that, yes. If you say you avoid close contact, let's say if you go to church, eh, in the congregation, when you are worshipping, you are singing, you are dancing. When we're singing, we are together again. Now we can't, we can't hug and we can't shake hands, but that's just a temporary measure. Let's hope that this doesn't get here and it ends. Uh, sooner than later. Maxwell Agbagba has also been speaking to the vice chairman of the Odona branch of the GPRTU, uh, Alaji Issa Mohammed, who says they are helpless and that they want government to intervene by providing them with sanitizers and education. We, we didn't, we, uh, this epidemic, we, we hear that the, the epidemic now uh, is in uh, Togo yeah. and other neighboring countries. Other neighboring countries. But you see, they supposed we didn't hear about the media. The media is supposed to talk more, but we can do our effort here. Okay. But let's take it, God forbid, let's take it when somebody have some the virus here. What will you do? What we we will do? Which advice or which experience we have here? We can't do anything. You, you can't do anything. We can't do anything. We don't know. But we hear that they say they said we should find a uh, sanitizer. Some of people say we should find when you get soap and this thing. Yeah, you, you, but you, you seem helpless. But have you have you not thought about you know uh, maybe putting bowls of water here so that for passengers um, who would board you know the vehicles that are parked here, they wash. You insist on proper hand washing before they get onto the vehicles. Is there not a suggestion you are considering or anything? Oh, that one is good. Now, 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 you, now you are advising us. You understand? That's why. We, that's why we, we are we are saying that the government or the the municipal assembly that control here, or the MP or the assemblyman, supposed to come to come and educate us more because we are many people here. Now, what will you do? We don't know anything about it. So the chief GPRT chairman there asking for government to help them with sanitizers. But you know, it is your responsibility, Fred, to. Uh, keep yourself protected. So mm -hmm. if you're waiting for sanitizers from government and they haven't come, it's it's not. You, really you'd that have expensive. to get your own sanitizer. And yeah. today, 
I got to know that it's not, uh, how do they put it? It's not every sanitizer be sanitizer. <laughs> you know, okay. the sanitizers, Educators. the sanitizer must be alcohol based and not just that, it must be 70% alcohol. So be deliberate about it. Look for it on the bottle mm -hmm. that this contains 70% alcohol. Okay. Then you can get that. Anything less may be ineffective. Uh, be sure that you have the right one. We've also heard about alcohol-based this, alcohol-based that. Mm -hmm. People are actually thinking that drinking the alcohol into your body could actually work the magic. All right, so the area where the virus infects is completely different from where drinks or food pass. Okay, so, okay, go, go, explain that further. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you drink alcohol, yeah. it will not pass through your your system where the viruses would be in case okay. you are infected so you won't kill the virus anyway uh, yeah it's a different alcohol, there's a different channel you instead. you just drink everything and and once the viruses are in you it enters your bloodstream and drinking alcohol. whether you drink alcohol or not right. nothing happens i just want to us to clarify this for so the don't the drink public. the alcohol it, it won't by do with it a sanitizer something that's been purposely made for hand hands rubbing. Okay. Right, but you can can you rub your hands with alcohol as well? Uh, as in I, 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 I've not been told about that, but uh, the trainer today made uh, told us his experience, what he found. On Sunday, he was training a group, and uh, a certain lady came and said that the brother is in the US who, uh, because they said they should use alcohol based hand rub. Uh, they started buying, they, they ran out in their community, so they decided to buy Jack Daniels. Uh, to uh, wash their uh, hands? Yes, <laughs> to <laughs> drink some and wash their hands. And so Jack Daniels too proved to be very expensive, so they told their sister to send gallons of appetitions to, to the United States. <laughs> well, that's not what you want to do. You want to actually take this disease very seriously, and you want to take all the necessary precautions. now. M messages the way the way that you're sending in the messages um, shows how concerned you are. So t go the extra mile and protect yourself. I'll read a few of these questions and then we'll go. We'll call it a, a wrap with Fred, and then we'll take a break. And when we return, we go to Parliament. With this pandemic, this one is asking: We make requisitions to our medical stores for protective clothing, and yet we are not getting them. Why? I believe that this person is a nurse. Uh, you sent he sent this message about 15 times deliberately wanting uh, it for it to be read. He says, I'm saying this because some of us at the health centers and hospitals have not received face masks for the past eight to nine months. Okay, well, wow. that's it. This that's person it. doesn't say which hospital it is yes. because we are told that we've distributed about 5,000 PPEs mm. and some other, you know, uh, equipment okay. to ensure that they're able to Mm. prepare well it will be good if you send us your location which mm. clinic it, it is which hospital it is i mean fred is in touch with the health uh, experts we will relay this information to them and get the help back to you as it's required this one says when we are faced with coronavirus the government is saying there is medical staff prepared but they don't care about the life of the frontline nurses who might sacrifice their lives that's a it's a long message you sent i can't take all of that but uh this one okay so Gita, let's address that it's, okay it's, please. Uh, in this at this point in time mm -hmm. what we don't have to do as a people whether you are a nurse whether you are an ordinary person mm -hmm. whoever you are the disease will not spare you if it should be in ghana so yeah. the mistrust should be should be discarded don't mm -hmm. have mistrust for for the system because the health officials want you can ask questions but the mistrust will not help because uh, at, at, at the point of mistrust, then you do not want to follow the instructions or advice that you're given. Being given. Right, so. right. Is it advisable to be waving handkerchiefs at church during praises? Because most churches do that in Ghana, and we know that people are using their handkerchiefs to cough, to sneeze. A very, a very important, very important question. question. Please don't, don't do that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't wave handkerchiefs. Don't. All right. Well, that, well there's that. a lot for the church to learn today. <laughs> I mean, the microphones you're using, the, you know, you call it what, the sponge? The sponge, The yeah. sponge on the microphone, you ought to change it for each person. Don't wave your handkerchief, you know, you're the him. No, we're, we're not hemming for now. And um, you also ought to avoid unnecessary body contact in church. So a whole lot of things that we need to learn. But unfortunately, we don't have uh, all the time. This one says, Gifty, this is the time 
for government to give attention to the community and public health nurses for employment. Active community surveillance and health education is the ultimate prevention method. Prevention is our main business. This is coming from Japan in the Volta region. Fred, I'll take your final comment on this and we move on. Well, I learned also today, many things I learned, that mm -hmm. even my home is at risk. And How so? Yeah, because as I'm here, my children have gone to school. Mm. And by the time I return home, they would have come back. I don't know which children they came into mm. contact with mm. and who the parents of the children are, who they've also been in contact with. Mm -hmm. But they will come. By the time I get home, they would have gone into the fridge to take a drink or something for themselves. I also go and take a drink. They would have touched the door handle. They would have switched on the TV with the remote. Mm. And so and I, I am making well. a new, new rule in my house that only one person handles the TV remote. It is <laughs> mommy. <laughs> who stays at home more than any other, uh, she will okay. control the remote. Well, I don't know how many of you want to follow in Fred Smith's uh, footsteps to make rules in your home, but well, thankfully for me, I'm the only one who uses them. <laughs> the remote. So there's no problem there. But Fred, I'm just see seeing this one that's coming in. Uh, that just caught my attention. What of the frequent use of hot lemon juice? That so is completely false. Don't do that. We, uh, it came up at this meeting and it's okay. false. Oh. Don't do that. A lot of questions. A lot of questions on your mind. And hopefully we'll be doing more of this, Fred, I and think. And also be skeptical about the uh, in fact, kind some, of information. The, there's fake news in yeah. the system. Yeah. Yesterday we saw someone actually design a story on a BBC template looking like a BBC story that okay. there's the first case of coronavirus in, in Ghana. Ghana. Well, you you need to go to the website proper to check and that was the first step i did i did not find any such the, story. any such story right. i checked right. further and realized that even the airport they displayed in that story is in nigeria it's a lagos okay. airport e-terminal and yesterday there was no flight at all from okay. italy uh, I don't know who is interested in spreading such false information. Well, this is what happens. In pandemics, information goes out, information that can be false. But also note that when you spread some of this information, you, you, you are actually spreading the disease. You have fear. They say fear and apprehension is actually one of the main causes of the spread. Uh, of such diseases and pandemics. So, so we, we must be very careful. Uh, Gifty, we receive a lot mm. of information from the health experts, uh, especially Ghana Health Service, the doctors and the rest. And all of these things we get, we put them on myjoinline.com. So uh, I'm sure if you go there, stories mm. on COVID-19 or coronavirus, I'm sure you get some valuable information. Also, the Ghana Health Service, uh, they've put up uh, a website, the ghanahealthservice.com. Okay. Uh, you can go there and check for any information that you want. Okay. Um, GhanaHealthService.com. And then the WHO, they also have a website. There's a lot of advice. In fact, there's a course on coronavirus there, which is very short. You can, okay. Everybody can take to be an expert. All right. We'll be doing more of this here. I believe that it will help all of us to avoid the disinformation spread. This is The Pulse with me, Gipsy and Dopia. I'm here with my producer, of course. And that's why I'm saying with confidence that we'll be doing more of this here on the show. So we get you all the information that you require to stay safe.